Let's all rise from our seats. Sing to God be the glory. To God be the glory, great things He has done. So love He the world that He gave us His Son, who yielded His life an atonement for sin, and opened the life gates that all may go in. Let's sing this one more time. To God be the glory. To God be the glory, great things He has done. So love He the world that He gave us His Son, who yielded His life an atonement for sin, and opened the life gates that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory, great things He has done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest defender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon received. Great things. Great things He has taught us, great things He has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our victory when Jesus receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He has done. Sing glory. Glory, 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 give Him glory, great things He has done. Glory, 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 give Him glory, great things He has done. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory, great things He has done. Let's sing to God be the glory one more time. To God be the glory, great things He has done. So great be the world that He gave us His Son, who yielded His life an atonement for sin, and opened the life gates that all may go in. Let's sing one more time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people The Son and give Him the glory, great things He has done. Sing this new song, Joy to the World. For He is good. 
for he is good. He was born to conquer the grave. The light of the world, the reason for Christmas Day. Sing stars we have seen. And stars we have seen over deserts and oceans. Darkness was deep, never hopeless. Redemption came, and his name is Jesus. Sing all you people. Sing all you people, the Lord Almighty reigns. Sing every creature. Every creature of God come bless his name for he is good for he is good for he is good he was born to conquer the grave light of the world the reason for Christmas day let's sing one more time sing all you people sing all you people the Lord Almighty every creature sing every creature of God come bless his name for he is good for he is good he was born to conquer the grave light of the world the reason for Christmas day from the mountains from the mountains we will shout it out for the Lord our God Almighty reigns. He is with us. He is with us now. For the Lord our God. Let's sing one more time from the mountains. From the mountains we will shout it out. For the Lord our God Almighty reigns. He is with us. He is with us now. For the Lord our God Almighty God come bless his name for he is good for he is good for he is good he was born to conquer the grave light of the world the reason for Christmas sing all you people the Lord Almighty reigns sing every creature of God come bless his that you have done for your life that was sacrificed for our sins, Lord. Lord, at this time, as we worship you, as we listen to your word, Father, speak to us, guide us throughout this week, guide us throughout our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Would you please remain standing and let us now affirm our faith with reading of the Apostles' Creed. In unison, begin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you for that beautiful song. A silent night is coming. Let us wait for that. Today, we invited Pastor Jay to preach for us. Now, as you may know very well already, Pastor Jay is in charge of our children's ministry, Zara. Now, the sad news is that he will be leaving us next Sunday, the 19th, because he is planning on to study abroad in the U.S. in the coming year. Please do express your thanks and goodbyes right after the service. Now, why don't we welcome him with a warm heart? Good morning, good morning everyone. Yes, um, thank you so much for um, inviting us this beautiful morning. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you at this time. And the word of God for us today is from Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. Chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. Eliashib, the high priest, and his fellow priests went to work and rebuilt the sheep gate. They dedicated it and set its door in place, building as far as the tower of Hananel, 100, which they dedicated and as far as the tower of Hananel, the men of Jericho built the adjoining section, and Zechar, son of Imlai, 
built next to them. The fish gate was built by the sons of Hassanel. They laid his beams and put his doors and board, bolts and bars in place. Miramuth, son of Uriah, the son of Hekas, repaired the next section. Next to him, Mishalem, son of Berechiah, the son of Mishazabel, made repairs. And next to him, Zadok, son of Baina, also made repairs. The next section was repaired by the men of Tekoa, but their nobles would not put their shoulders to the work under their supervisors. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for the word, Father, and thank you for um, all this time, Lord. Oh, Father, I pray that you would speak at this time, and I pray that your spirit will rest upon us. I pray that you will show us what it means to rebuild the walls in our lives, Lord. I pray that you would change us and mold us during this time, and we'll, be leave, we'll leave here as changed people because of it. Father, please protect our hearts and soften our hearts as we receive your words, and feed us with your words, Lord and reveal something of yourself today so that we could reveal your love to the people around us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Nehemiah and Ezra were originally one book, but later it was divided into two separate books. So now we have the book of Nehemiah. And the book is about a man named Nehemiah, who was an Israelite officer um, serving the Persian government. So in the book, Nehemiah hears that the walls of Jerusalem are destroyed. So he prays and he gets the permission from the Persian king to go back and to rebuild those Jerusalem walls. So in chapter 3, they begin the rebuilding project. You might have not Pay much attention to this chapter if you have read Nehemiah before. You know, it's one of those chapters with all the names, you know, the genealogies and the dietary laws and the Leviticus. It's one of those chapters. But the whole chapter is just a list of names who participated in the rebuilding the wall. So who made what? Who repaired which section? But today I sincerely pray that God would speak to us through this passage and tell us how to rebuild the walls in our lives how to restore the walls in our own lives today. So the first thing that we want to look at is verse 1. I'll read it again for you. It says, Eliashib the high priest and his fellow priests went to work and rebuilt the ship gate. They dedicated it and set his store in place, building as far as the Tower of the Hundred, which they dedicated, and as far as the Tower of Hananel. First of all, the whole process of Rebuilding the wall started from rebuilding the sheep gate. If you look through the chapter 3, um, you'll find that there are a lot of gates in the wall. So there is verse 3, verse, um, there is a fish gate. Verse 13, there's a valley gate. Uh, 15, fountain gate. 28, horse gate, and so on. There are many gates for different purposes. And the important thing is that the whole rebuilding project begins with the rebuilding of the sheep gate. And you might wonder what this, what this sheep gate is. Well, the sheep gate is just literally just the gate for the ships to enter the city. And the sheep are, ships are usually sacrificed. So by setting the rebuilding of sheep gate as their priority, the people wanted to restore the sacrifice first. We can see they wanted to restore this before they do anything else. It means that their sacrifice had to be restored first. Their relationship with God had to be restored first. Restoring sacrifice was to restore the relationship with God. So they made the sheep gate as their number one priority. And how can we apply this in our lives today? Sacrifices in the Old Testament transformed into modern-day worship. If there is something broken 
in our lives today, the rebuilding should start from the sheep gate. It's the sacrifice, the worship, and the relationship with God. Those things have to come first before we do anything else. Your relationship with God must be restored first. And in the New Testament, who becomes the sheep gate? Jesus Christ, right? In John chapter 10, um, verse 7, Jesus says, I will tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. So for us, putting priority on the sheep gate means that we place our priority on our Lord Jesus in our lives. So putting God first before we do anything. Next, I want to look at verse 5. It says, The next section was repaired by the men of Tekoa, but their nobles would not put their shoulders to the work under their supervisors. It says the people of Tekoa took on the next section, but their nobles did not sweat. People joined in rebuilding the wall, and everybody joined in this project. They had to put their jobs or other works away. People had to dedicate their times. People had to make time for their job, for this job. But the nobles didn't participate. They didn't want to give up their privileges, and they didn't want to serve. And this is what we need to be careful for. Uh, we need to watch out for this. I just want to see um, if we had anything like the nobles of Tekoa today. If we had anything like the nobles of Tekoa, we need to let this go. If you've been around the church, um, you see a lot of people serving the church in different parts, right? All the leaders and pastors. And it breaks my heart when I when they change, like the novels from our scriptures today, and I have no exception from it. You have probably heard of the term um, noblesse oblige, right? This implies that nobility is not just the entirement. Um, it requires a person who holds a such a status to fulfill their responsibility. If you are in leadership or not, um, let's remember today, the nobles of Tekoa, and not make the same mistakes of, do, of doing the opposite of what Christ showed us to do. If you remember our Lord Jesus, our King, our God, came into a human flesh and died for us. If we, if we remember this and meditate on this, how can we act like the nobles of Tekoa if we remember what Jesus done for us. Matthew chapter 20, verse 28 says, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And this is what we should resemble, right? And this is what Jesus said. Now, let's go back to verse 1 again. Um, Eliashib the high priest and his fellow priests went to work and rebuilt the ship gate. So priests are usually not the ones to put dirt on their hands during this time, right? They don't usually work outside. But if you look at verse 1, they dedicated to build the gates, right? And this perfectly exemplifies how we should serve as the follower of Christ, to serve and not to be served. And this is a huge contrast with the novels in verse 5. Lastly, I want to uh, look at one more thing. Um, have you heard of a term Zeitgeist? I believe it's a German, Zeitgeist. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, it's a concept from 19th century um, German philosopher Hegel. Um, in English, it means the spirit of the age or spirit of the times. So it is the spirit or mood of a particular period of history as shown by the ideas and beliefs of the time. So Hegel, um, he believed that there is a spirit 
or essence in a particular time. So nowadays, people um, use this term um, in many different areas, but that's like the idea in a nutshell. So for example, historians would say, the spirit of the ancient Greece was know yourself. You know, it was a time of philosophy, Socrates, Aristotle, so it's a know yourself. In the Roman time, the spirit was master yourself, master yourself. And after the Rome, during the Christendom, um, in Christian words, the spirit was deny yourself, deny yourself. And these are by secular historians, but it makes sense, right? One of the most important things in Christianity is to deny oneself. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, Jesus says to his disciples, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now, when we say um, deny yourself, uh, it doesn't mean that you have to like kill your self-esteem. It's not about that, right? It means that you have to realize um, you are a sinner before God ontologically. And that we have no hopes without Jesus. And there is no way to reconcile with God without the blood of Jesus. So in order to realize that you are a sinner, you are apart from God ontologically, you must deny yourself and fill that place with Jesus. The reason why I am telling you all this is because we find the same thing from Nehemiah today. Um, to be honest, I've never really paid much attention to this chapter. When I first read this part, I was like, um, okay, this one built that, and this family built that, and skip, skip, skip. But as I was meditating on this section uh, in this particular chapter, I found one thing. And I actually counted all the names in chapter 3. It was 71. I might be wrong. I counted only once. So 71 names. Yes. Don't count it right now. And if you just read through, um, you'll realize that Nehemiah's name isn't here. It's not appearing in chapter 3. He was the leader of this whole rebuilding project, right? He came all the way from Persia for just, just for this job. He backed the king and got the permission to do this, to serve people by rebuilding the wall. He managed all these people and supplies. And when he wrote this, he omitted his name. Instead, he wrote everyone else's name on this page. You'll see a name, Nehemiah, in verse 16, but that's a different Nehemiah with the same name. So he omitted his name in this chapter. And I was just like imagining, um, if I were writing this chapter, I would have probably added one line at the end, like, and Jay managed all of this, you know? And Nehemiah could have put his name, right? Nehemiah managed all of this, all of the project process. He can totally do it, and in fact, he deserved it, right? No one can argue. However, he wrote other people's names instead. He left out his own name. Because I believe he knew that this wasn't the work of his own. He realized that this was the work of God. So he could deny himself because he was full of God. And this is what God wants for us today. Deny yourself, empty yourself, and fill that vacant place with Christ. And it is hard. Um, it's a human nature. When we do something, we want to be acknowledged, want to be praised, applauded. However, we must leave this space for God to be glorified, just like Nehemiah did in this chapter. Now, I want to show you some examples of what we just talked about. Um, it's actually um, some graves, um, tombs of great reformers in, during the Reformation time. And I believe their graves um, show kind of lesson, tell us kind of lesson. 
and show what we have talked about today. So the first one is uh, John Calvin. Yeah, when Calvin died, he was afraid that someone might be tempted to remember him and kind of worship him. He was tempted, right? Everyone wants to be remembered. Everyone wants to be remembered, right? But he was tempted to be remembered. And in, in his last words, he says, if I die, do not put a tombstone on my grave so that nobody will recognize my grave. He didn't want his name on his grave, just like Nehemiah. He didn't want this tombstone. He was afraid that someone might glorify him after he died. So originally, um, on the tomb, there was nothing, uh, originally. But then there was so many visitors um, to, came to see the grave. So someone put JC, um, John Calvin. And nowadays, they made a gravestone. Yeah, they made a tombstone nowadays. I don't think Calvin would like this at all, but yeah, here it is. Another example is uh, John Knox. He's from Scotland. He's a Scottish reformer during the Reformation time. And actually, our Presbyterian tradition is from John Knox and Calvin. And if you ever go to uh, Edinburgh in Scotland, um, please visit this church. This is um, called St. Giles at Edinburgh. Yes, oh, this is where he ministered. And this is like the mother church of world Presbyterianism. So if you ever have a chance to visit Scotland, um, please go there. And right next to the church, there is a grave of John Knox. And can you find a grave in the picture? It's not, it's not the statue. It's actually in the parking lot, uh, parking lot 23. It's actually in the parking lot 23. So um, if there is a car parked in that spot, you can't really see his grave. You have to be lucky. Yes. So what can we learn from their humble graves, right? They all practiced denying oneself, just like the Nehemiah in our scripture today. They emptied themselves and left all the glory to God. So in this time of Advent, let's rebuild our walls by putting God first, and let's rebuild our walls by not following what the nobles had done. And let's rebuild the walls by denying ourselves and filling the space with Christ. Let me read the scripture one more time, and I'll pray. It's Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for your son. And thank you for your amazing love that covers all our weaknesses. Father, at this time, help us to restore the worship in our lives. Help us to restore the relationship with you. Help us to learn from you so that we can serve the world and the people around us. Father, we remember how you resist the proud but give grace to the humble. Fill us with your spirit and make us humble like your son. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We thank the Lord for that message through the word of God. Now please join me in singing hymn number 434 in response. 434. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone up. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We pray. 
praise thee, O God, for thy spirit of light, who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill its heart with thy love. May its soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Let us pray together. Our Heavenly Father, Thank you for this beautiful Sunday. We are able to worship and to listen to your word. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us of the ways to build the wall in our lives and to put our relationships with you as the priority in our life and to deny ourselves and to glorifying you only. We pray for our pastoral team, Pastor Justin, Pastor Stephen, and Pastor Jay, who have been leading our congregation in your name. We also pray for our elders and all members who have been faithfully serving you with their callings. We pray that you will continue to bless their lives of service. We pray especially for Pastor Jay, who is going to leave us to pursue his education. We pray that you will guide him in his path and that you will give him your wisdom to do his study well. Lord, please guide our hearts and minds as we enter the later part of the Advent period. Lord, help us not to be distracted by all of the festivities and to instead focus on preparing our hearts for the remembrance of Christ's birth. We are thankful, Lord, for the joy and hope that you gifted us through the birth of Jesus Christ, and may we be able to share this joy to the people around us. We pray especially for our members who are going to visit their families during this holiday season, Lord. Please protect them during their trip, and may they gather with joy that is from you only. We also pray for our members who cannot be with their families in this holiday season. Lord, we bring our families to you, and may you protect them wherever they are. We also pray for the pandemic situation which is currently on rise again due to the new virus variant. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are currently sick or negatively impacted by the situation. Lord, may you help them to thrive over their struggles, and we pray that you will protect us with your ever-loving hands. We pray for the paramedics and service workers who work hard to handle the situation. We pray for your protection and wisdom for them while they carry on their duty. We also pray for the governments around the world, especially of this country, Lord. Please give them your wisdom so that they can make decisions that will accelerate the recovery from this pandemic. We are going to give our, our offering today, Lord. Please bless all the giving hands and help us be reminded that everything that we have are blessings from you only. We pray so that this offering will be useful for your church and to grow your kingdom on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
You know, Christmas is at the door when you hear that song. Thank you for your beautiful voice and devotion. Good morning again. I would like to welcome each one of you joining us today for IWE um, joint service. If you are here for the first time, would you please raise your hand so that we may recognize you? Anybody? We have one, two, two guests. Why don't we give them a big hand? We welcome you in the name of the Lord. For those that are fully vaccinated, uh, we recommend you receive the vaccinated tag for easier access. You may stop by the application booth in front of the church admin building. You need to bring your phone, which has your um, COV certificate, as well as uh, your ID to you know, prove that you are the person. For further info, please let the pastoral team know if you have any other questions. Uh, you can make your offerings to the, uh, the offertory box at the lobby. Also, there's an online method of giving your offerings for your convenience. Be sure to fill out your name, date of birth, and the offering type. Also, for further info, please refer to the bulletin. Zara Worship. Zara Children's Worship gathers at the admin building room number 504. Please pray for the continuing ministry of Zara and the smooth transition of leadership, as well as our teachers and students. Church calendar. Church calendar for year 2022 is prepared for you at the lobby desk. Please take one home to brighten your walls and desks. There are two types of calendars, so please choose one. If you want, you can take both. Let us now recite together the memory verse for this month. It's on the screen as well as your bulletin. Ready? Begin. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Amen. Please join me in the responsive reading of Commission and Blessing. 
Rejoice always and pray without ceasing. Give thanks to God whatever your circumstances. God has done great things for us. We rejoice that we are part of God's family. Listen for the word of the prophets. Be open to the stirrings of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God has come to us. We have a mission to accomplish for God. God is faithful and will stand by you. You are valued in God's covenant community. We are filled with joy as we go out to serve. We are thankful for the good news we carry. Amen. Now would you please stand and join me in singing closing song, hymn number 249. 249. Come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. Oh, come, let us adore. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Sing, choirs of angels, sing in exultation. Oh, sing, all ye bright house of heaven. Glory to God, all glory in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. this happy morning Jesus to thee be all glory again word of the Father now in flesh appear oh come let us adore him oh come let us adore him Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Amen. Before sharing peace, we would like to have a time of prayer for Pastor Jay's departure. Please come up to the stage. He has a long way ahead of him, and he surely needs God's provision relationally, physically, spiritually, and financially. And why don't we pray for him with one heart? I will pray. Dear Father God, who guides the path of your humble servants, we pray for your chosen servant, Pastor Jay. Please help him to tie the loose ends, if there are any, as he leaves Young Nakaiwi. And guide him through the initial process of leaving Korea for a deeper study into theology. Father, bless your servant financially, for the times are tough for this generation to further God-fearing knowledge. Bless him with companions who will support him on the way to completion. And above all, bless him with good academic advisors who will see through his studies. We thank you for his presence here at IWE for the past days. May his teachings and care bear fruit in the days to come here in IWE. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's give him a big hand for his faithful service here at IWE. And our elder and our deaconess will give him a small gift. Let's, let's give them a big hand. Okay. Thank you again. Okay. All right. And now it's time for sharing peace with each other. Let's greet one another 
to your left and to your right by saying, let us restore our sheep gate. Let us restore our sheep gate. Amen. And here is the benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of us, restoring the precious relationship with Jesus, resembling his sacrificial life as we go out to the world to serve, ever emptying ourselves here in the Lord's house and out there in the world from now and forevermore. Amen.